Hi there, coming to you from SkyFi Audio in Glen Rock, New Jersey. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel if you like these videos. That'll keep us motivated. Today we're featuring a Conrad Johnson Premier 12 LS. It's a line stage preamplifier from Conrad Johnson, one of our favorite brands here at the shop. I thought I'd leave this one open so you could get a good look at the insides and we'll go over some of the features and how this is different from other preamps. Um, this particular model, the 17LS, was produced in right about 2000, 2001. Stereophile has a great article on this preamp, a very well detailed review if you'd like to uh, read a bit more about how it sounds. I'm going to cover mostly uh, how it's made. That's really what we focus on here. Uh, and then a little bit of, of what we found in the listening room. So the LS17 uh, retailed right around $4,500 back in 2000, 2001, which is quite a bit of money for a line stage preamp. And by line stage, it means that it does not have a phono uh, section. It has a phono input, meaning you can utilize a phono preamp, an external phono preamp, but you would need a secondary box in order to run a turntable with this preamp. So you'll see in the front, it does in fact have a phono labeled input, but that's a line level input. Again, uh, you'll need a secondary uh, phono section for this. Uh, nevertheless, it's a wonderful preamp. The construction is, is really high up there. And um, you could tell that Conrad Johnson put a lot of effort, not into just the circuitry, but the chassis and the buttons and the remote and everything else that goes with it. Uh, finished in a beautiful champagne gold finish like much of the Conrad Johnson has been for all the years they've been in production. This one has a particularly cool cutout in the front um, to provide ventilation to the tubes. It utilizes a set of four 6922 tubes. So this little cutout is not just aesthetic, it also provides sort of like a chimney effect for cooling and so on. Uh, the other neat thing about the tube uh, mounting system is that it's actually uh, floated in an elastomer. So you can see when I push on it, it actually bounces up and down a little bit. That's set to reduce, obviously, vibrations and make sure that the mechanical vibration that's injected through the floor and the equipment doesn't make it into the tubes. Tubes are sometimes microphonic, and if you excite them a lot, they will pick up some of the sound and and put it back into the system, which is not good for a preamp. So it looks like Conrad Johnson floated uh, pretty much the entire PC board in an elastomer, as you can see. Um, other things to note, uh, the digital display, it's got um, a digital display, a left and a right channel, essentially volume control. Here you've got it, it's set to 11, 12, 13. So it's a dual mono design, meaning there are separate controls or at least uh, indicators for the left versus right channels. All right, let's go into some of the features first. Um, pretty easy to use other than a power button and a reasonably long boot up cycle for the tunes to warm up. It's pretty easy to use. Um, over here you've got buttons for a source selection and you've got quite a bit of the sources to choose from. You've got the phono that we talked about which is also doubles an auxiliary one. We've got a tuner, um, CD, video, and auxiliary two. Second there here in EPL is an external processing loop. It's a nice feature in case you were to use an equalizer or even better, um, a home theater setup. This would allow you to kind of use a two-channel preamp in conjunction with a surround processor. So that would send the signal out and then back in through the line stage. To the right, we've got the volume up and down, pretty easy to use. And you'll hear this pretty loud clicking every time you select the volume. And we'll go a bit into that. It's a step attenuator circuitry that's pretty neat. And then the mute uh, brings everything to zero. It's fast, it's responsive, it feels good to the touch. So nice job from Conrad Johnson. Flipping around to the back, very simple stuff here. Um, other than the uh, removable power cord, we've got uh, everything arranged in left and right rows, uh, the top being the left and the bottom being the right. So there are two sets of main outputs, all single-ended RCAs. Here's your second uh, external processor loop and the first one, and then 
same thing but uh, the ends. So the two ends for the processor loops and the two outs. Moving on to the right, the auxiliary two, video, CD tuner, and phono axe. So you've got a set of five selectable inputs, uh, single-ended as well. Let's come back to the front of the unit. And actually, let's have a look at the inside so you can see what we're talking about. Um, it's divided pretty uh, evenly into two separate areas. You've got the, the audio section, which is essentially the preamplifier section. And then back here, you've got the control section. And the first thing you'll notice is these little orange things. These are relays. And they've got a pretty unique volume control system where as you press volume up or volume down, it'll engage a certain number of relays, which are matched to um, a, a very high precision a resistor. And it injects that resistor into the signal path and essentially varies the control, the volume control through attenuation. So they're very specific values associated with the resistors and they're laser trim V-shays. So very, very high quality. So there's no variable potentiometers you would find in most preamps. This is actually stepped and it's uh, varied by the changing the resistance. Pretty neat, very complex, it takes a lot of parts and a lot of dollars to make something like that go rather than just using a potentiometer. But this is a really neat feature of this preamp. Looking at the rest of the audio boards, you'll see the highest quality capacitors that Conrad Johnson can get their hands on. Of, you know, epoxy, uh, PC boards, very, very high quality stuff. And dual power supplies. The power supply feeding the analog section is different from the power supply feeding and managing the stepped attenuator board. So nice job for Conrad Johnson for not cutting corners on that. The chassis is made out of uh, aluminum. You've got extruded aluminum here. You've got a solid aluminum brushed front plate. Also very nice. And look at the quality of these jacks. Really about as high end as we've seen on a preamp in this price range. So absolutely gorgeous. To top it all off, they didn't skimp when it comes to the remote. They gave you uh, a full featured a solid aluminum. This looks like the same remote that Class A Audio used in the, in the 2000s. Uh, you've got controls for the balance, the level, and then the inputs. So simple stuff, but that's pretty much all you need. So here what happens as I go through the volume control. It's engaging a series of resistors. Really neat stuff. Now if I change the balance, it'll offset by that exact number. Here we've got a three attenuation difference between the left and the right channel, and then they'll go in uniform. So there's no need to do left and right volume controls. So each click is about 0.7 dBs, and it goes anywhere between zero and 99 clicks. Um, that's about it. Um, a little bit more about the circuitry. It is in fact a single triode stage, and it does not use any global or local negative feedback, which is hard to do in a preamp like this. So very, very simple triode design preamp and Stereophile claims that this resulted in a pretty luscious and sweet sound. Um, we were able to confirm, confirm that here in our listening room. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful piece and we'll find a really good home for it. Thanks for watching SkyFi Audio from Glen Rock, New Jersey. Please subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing. Thank you so much.